Hey guys, how are you doing? Scott here from Scott's Bass Lessons again, hope you're well. Um, today I thought we'd go chilled with this bass riff of the week and just do a groove that, um, that really highlights two super sexy notes you can use on two different types of chords. And I got this idea uh, to do this bass riff of the week because in the campus, which is the the forum um, inside the Scott Space Lessons Academy, in the campus, um, somebody submitted a video for me to review and he was working with a producer that wanted him to um, create a bass line that was busy, but you know, completely, you know, not standing on anybody's toes. And, and for me, so, you know, I gave him some feedback and stuff like that on what he was playing. And for me, there's two notes that work really well over different types of chords, okay? Um, and these two notes are in this, this bass riff of the week. And the two notes are on minor chords, it's really nice to use ninths. And on major chords, so with a major third, it's really nice to use thirteenths. It gives the thirteenths give a really kind of gospel type vibe. And that's what a lot of the gospel players are loving, that kind of thirteenth. It comes from the pentatonic, but it's something that really sticks out to me as something that's great to use on major chords, just to fill out the line a little bit, your bass line a little bit, but you don't step on anybody's toes, you know. You can, you know, be fancy without, you know, um, getting in on anybody's nerves. I was gonna say something else. I was gonna say a different word there, <laughs> but I'll save that for the X-rated version. So the this week's bass riff of the week is just, it's dead simple, it's just going from E minor to C major seven. And if you want the play along track that you heard me playing along at the beginning of, the, of this video, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the link below this video. It will take you through to a page, follow the instructions, and you'll be able to, that'll take you through to the toolkit area on Scott's Bass Lessons where you'll be able to find all the downloads for all the bass riffs of the week. And that includes tab and notation as well. And if you are a um, Scott's Bass Lessons Academy member, in watching this on the site, all the download options are just below this video, so you can download the tab, the notation, the backing track, but you can also, if you're an Academy member, you can actually download this video file and the audio only version if you want to put it in any software to slow it down or anything like that as well. So what is the bass riff, okay? So again, it's just over an E minor seven chord going to a C major seven chord, okay? And I'm just gonna play these chords for you, so it's like a. That's the groove, okay? Just E minor. C major seven. So in the bass riff, as I said, on minor chords, it's really nice to fit in the ninth, and that's the top note that you hear within the riff. That is a ninth over that E minor. And the ninth is used, it's, it, you know, you can use it on major chords as well, or dominant chords, but it just sounds so beautiful on minor chords. It really brings out kind of a, kind of, just a sexiness to the sound of the chord. And then you, I, in the groove, I go to a C major, okay? And then I hit that, that 13th, okay? And the 13th's in the run as well, that. So let's go through that riff. Apologies, by the way, for the black glove. Um, I don't know where my other glove is. I've lost it. I'll get another one for next week. Um, and if you're wondering what the glove is, it doesn't have anything. I get so many emails about the glove. Uh, it's got nothing to do with the tone of the instrument at all. Um, obviously, if you press down a string, it doesn't matter what you're pressing it down with. It, you know, because of the fret, Anything behind that fret, you know, you can push it down with anything. It's not going to make a difference to the sound. It's actually for medical purposes. I've got some weird 
um, disorder called focal dystonia. Long story. Um, so anyway, so let's check out the base riff, okay? So I get it in 4-4, four, four, pretty, you know, it's a pretty slow tempo, nice, that kind of thing. So let me play it down, start with the okay, case. So. Okay, let's do it this tempo. One, two, three, four. Okay, so just to really break that down, on the E minor chord, I'm just playing really E minor chord tones, okay? So starting off with an open E, and I'm going E, then the octave, then the fifth, and then the flat seven of the chord. And then that nine. And on the nine, I'm trying, kind of doing a gliss up to it. So I'm hitting the octave, the E, and then first, second finger, first, second finger, and then fourth. You could do it with the third if you wanted to. Like that. But I'm just using my fourth on there. And this note here, I, when I was playing the riff, I kind of played that a little bit afterwards a multitude of different ways. So let me just uh, decide on one. Let's just do that so. So just the seventh of the E minor to the fifth. So all, all they're all E minor chord tones, except I'm adding in the ninth that top note to add that bit of sexiness to that minor sound. Again. We could just loop it round. So just loop it round, get used to the line. Remember, all the notes aren't played the same. There's, we're going, you know. That top note is cut short. It's not. It's actually cut short. You know, the, the other notes kind of flow into each other, but it's always a great thing when you're doing bass lines like this, to actually think about the articulation of the note. Is it cut short or is it flowing into the next note or is it somewhere in between? Because it can be somewhere in between. And then we go to that C major seven. And the C major, so for major chords, you can use thirteenths, okay? Now just to make that simple for you, the thirteenth of the chord, it's also known as the sixth of the chord. It's people call it the thirteenth because on piano, um, for instance, you don't play a chord like this, what you'd normally do is something like root, third or fifth in the, and this is like basic stuff, right? Root, um, third or fifth in the left hand, and then you'd maybe play the, say it was root and fifth in the left hand, then you play the third and maybe the thirteenth up here, okay? So it, they, they call that sixth the thirteenth because in piano type voicings, generally, um, the chord is played across a couple of octaves, not within one octave like that, where it would be called a sixth, okay? So that's why, when generally speaking, people refer to um, the thirteenth of the chord, it's just the same as the sixth, okay? But it's just, you know, in piano voice in terms, it would be outside, outside of one octave, but in our terms, it doesn't really matter, okay? So it is the thirteenth of a chord, but you can also call it the sixth. So on that, is somebody building a shed next door, aren't they? Yeah. By the way, have I been banging my leg? Denmark, the uh, the guy who did the video here at Scott's Bass Lessons, I've been banging my legs when I've been doing this groove. He's like, stop stamping your foot. So, have I been doing it? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys, if the camera's wobbling, it's because I'm just digging the groove. Too much groove. Okay, so on that, on that major chord, on the C major chord, I'm just... Oh. 
Okay, so it's just root fifth. And again, there's a bit of daylight between the fifth. I'm, I'm not going. There's a little bit of daylight between playing that fifth and then the 13th. And again, I'm using that gliss. And we could just loop that as well. Okay, so the two parts there are. type okay and all that is it's over a C major pentatonic major pentatonic sound scale if you don't know yet by the way I've just released a um, huge scales and arpeggios course into the Scots Bass Lessons Academy it's over 10 hours long it takes you through everything you know scale arpeggio chord tone related in a really really structured way um, so if you want to know more about you know how to use scales how to use arpeggios and how they actually relate to each other and that's a really key point that generally books they just teach them as these kind of standalone things and it's you know it's wrong it's the, everything's interrelated okay so if you want to find out more about that you should check out the the new course um, in the Scots Bass Lessons Academy um, called harmonic layering and layering I can't say I say layering harmonic layering but Lisa my wife she says layer so anyway so harmonic layering and it's where I'm talking about actually you know building the foundation and then laying the chord tones on top of that and the scales on top of that and there's a really specific way that you can look at things to make it a lot easier so check out that course if you haven't it's in the Scots Bass Lessons Academy okay so this little lick If we go from the E minor, that so it's so that on the downbeat, two, three, four. So it's fi fi uh, talking about uh, intervals: five, root, thirteen, or six. And I've got a little little gliss back and forward trill. same on that E so again and when I get down to that D up slide down to that C slide all the tab and notation for this again if you watch it on YouTube hit the link below it'll take you through to a page follow the instructions and then it'll take you to the Scots Bass Lessons Toolkit where you can get all the tab and notation and play along material for all of the bass, riff, the bass riffs of the week can't speak today all the bass riffs of the week and if you're an Academy member, remember all the download videos, you'll just be able to see them straight into the video and you'll be able to download the video file as well so you can actually watch it offline, okay? So... And then back onto the E. So the whole riff, okay, I'm just going to play it without the backing track and then I'm going to sign off and then you can hear it with the play along track as well, okay? So here it is up to speed just so you can, you know, get a taste for it. Two, a three, no stamping, Scott. Two, a three... And those pentatonic type of gospel runs. It's that 13th to me that gives it that real gospel kind of Stevie sound sometimes. 
So if it was just in sort of like the key of E major. You know that, got that 13th in there. Just ah, it just sounds so cool. Kind of like that, um, you know, that's that that synth left hand. Well, actually, they do it with the right hand, and they've got the uh, the little wheel, you know, the, the, the pitch bending wheel. And if you want to check some bass lines out like that, there's some uh, there's some great stuff actually on Off the Wall, Mike, the Michael Jackson album. It's absolutely killer synth bass lines on there that you should check out if you want to uh, dig a little deeper into that. And again, a lot of 13ths going on as well. So that was this week's bass riff of the week, guys. Again, I'm gonna do 52 of these in a row and we're on number, what number? <laughs> 14? We're on number 14 right now. So we've got how many to do? Never do math on camera. Can you do math on camera? No. No, me neither. So <laughs> we've got a few more to go. Um, we've got something really, really cool coming for December. It, it will be, oh yeah, you're going to be seeing this uh, on the 25th, I think. So um, in December, we're going to be releasing a new video every day on the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, right up to the um, Christmas day. We're going to be doing giveaways. We're going to be doing um, behind the scenes videos. You're going to be meeting the team. Uh, my wife's going to come in and sing a song. Apparently, that's you know she's threatened to do it, um, and there's just going to be a whole load of cool stuff going on. I might even dress up as Santa Claus. Okay, that's it. The dare's out. Um, but other than that, so if you want to check that out, make sure you go sign up and be um, subscribed to ScottsBassLessons.com because then you're going to find out when all the giveaways are going on and all that cool stuff. Um, it's going to be a trying to think of some sort of like base Christmassy year thing going on. But yeah, it's going to be good fun. So again, take it easy and I will see you in the shed. Bye.